Low Power Variable Optics, LPVOs for short, sometimes shortened even more to simply LPVs. Next to red dots on pistols, they are one of the hottest items out there for firearms. Once they were relegated to the realm of competitive three-gun shooters, elite military units, dangerous game hunters. That's not the case anymore. They're finding increasing popularity with recreational shooters, individuals setting up rifles for home defense and law enforcement, and rightfully so. This video is not about LPVOs in general, but before we dive into the review, I do want to touch upon two key attributes of LPVOs. One of those is PID, positive identification. The ability to bump that magnification up from one to four to six to eight to 10 in order to more clearly define and see your target and ID it. That is crucial for law enforcement. Not only is the ability there for targets at distance, but for targets in low light conditions. This is especially true for individuals who are older and who do not see as well at night. LPVOs allow for greater PID across the board. Secondly, the ability to have a much more defined aiming point. Bumping that magnification up and having a reticle there is going to give you a more precise aiming point than you typically can achieve with a red dot or iron sights. So providing you exercise the fundamentals of marksmanship, this should lead to greater accuracy downrange. So greater PID and greater accuracy are two of the attributes we're looking at with the LPVO. Let's go ahead and get into our review of the Miopta Miostar R2 1-6 LPVO. Just going to rattle off some of the specs on this scope, and uh, then we'll talk about it in greater detail. This is an 11.7-inch scope, weighing 17.4 ounces. It's giving you a field of view of roughly 113 to 119 feet at 100 yards. It gives you a choice of four different reticles. Uh, two of the reticles are BDC reticles. There's the BDC-2 reticle, the BDC-3 reticle, the 4C reticle, and the K.2 reticle. Of the four reticles shown, the BDC-3 and 4C are my favorite. They are the boldest. In the event of an illumination failure, they're going to give you the most useful reticle under low light conditions. This scope has the BDC-3 reticle. All reticles are second focal plane. It's my opinion that most shooters using a general purpose rifle are going to be best served with a second focal plane scope. This is especially true for individuals with aging eyes, eyes like mine that don't see as well anymore. The boldness and consistency of that reticle throughout the zoom range is going to be much easier to see, much more so than a first focal plane scope. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the scope now. It has a fast focus eyepiece that is easily adjusted. The zoom ring is very smooth, very easy to power through the magnification range. Illumination is controlled on the left-hand side of the scope. There are settings all the way up to number eight with off settings in between each of the numbered on settings. The battery is in the left-hand side of the illumination control knob. The elevation and windage turrets have O-rings that you can feel the caps overcoming as you unscrew them. This scope features what I consider probably one of the best tactile and audible adjustments I've ever seen. They are very precise and require a good bit of tension to adjust. I have run the elevation up and down the windage left and right and have returned the scope to zero without any loss of zero. In order to zero out your turrets, you simply press down on the spring-loaded housing and turn it back into position to achieve your zero. Very precise half-inch adjustments. A very nice scope. Let's now talk about how the scope has performed. How has it done in actual use? I've had it for a while now and it's been on two different rifles. It's been in two different mounts. It's currently in the Scalar Works 1.93 inch mount, which is an amazing mount. You do pay for that amazingness though, but the scope has been great. Have close to 4,000 rounds downrange now with it and no issues. If you've seen my head down rifle video, you've seen the scope. I used it exclusively during that testing. 
In these video clips, you'll see that an LPVO should not slow you down when compared to a red dot. Once properly set up and your eye relief is established, they are just as fast as red dots, but you gain the benefits that only LPVOs can provide. I now want to talk to you about the quality of this scope, but in doing so, I want to establish my basis of knowledge. I'm not looking at the scope in a vacuum. I'm comparing it to scopes that I have owned or tested. My personal competition rifle has a Swaro Z6i, considered by many to be the best LPVO on the market when it comes to optical clarity and eye box. I also have the Vortex Viper PST2, what I consider the best bang for the buck LPVO on the market. I also have the Vortex Razor 1-6. to It's on my work rifle that I don't have here. And also the Callus K18i 1-8. to These are my basis of knowledge along with other scopes that I have tested. So how does the Myopta Mio Star R2 compare? Very favorably. The eye relief is very good. The eye box is very forgiving. The dot is daylight bright. I can take the reticle and place it on a brightly lit target and the dot is very bright and easily discernible. Glass quality is very clear. There's great edge to edge clarity. There's no perceivable distortion or fish bowling. I can scan a wood line and see detail in the shadow areas. Shooting into the sun is also very good. This is a good scope. So how does this sample of one compare to these other samples of one? Where does it fall in, in kind of this scope hierarchy? Much better than the cheaper Vortex Viper. Better than the more expensive, at least MSRP, Vortex Razor. Not as good as the Swaro or the Callus. But with that being said, this does have a price point of $14.99 MSRP. Much cheaper than the Swaro or the Callus. I'm of the opinion that this is the most underrated LPVO on the market. Very underrated. It is much closer quality-wise to the Swaro and the Callus than it is the Razor or the Viper, and at a much cheaper price point. So what are the cons on this scope? They're very small. One is the battery. Instead of using the universally available and ever so common CR2032 battery that every other LPVO uses. This one uses a CR2354 battery. It, it's a cheap battery. They're just not readily available. So if you end up picking one up, make sure you uh, stock up on batteries. Next would be the reticle. I applaud Miopta for giving us the choice of four reticles in the scope, but I wish one of them was a mill-based reticle. Uh, and the only reason being is all my other scopes are mill based and so if I picked one of these up I like that commonality of being able to move one scope to one rifle and back and forth and zero it and then I know my holds because a mill's a mill. Whereas BDCs, you know, they vary based upon what they were based off of. So Miopta, if you can give us a CR2032 battery version of this with a mill based reticle you're going to make an already great scope even better hey guys if you get a chance to check out the Miopta Mio Star R2 1 to 6 LPVO I highly recommend it it has a lot going for it and uh, I think if you put hands on one and certainly if you test one out you will find like I have that it truly is a great scope and highly underrated until next time you all stay safe take care